everybody! It is time for the monthly favorites roundup, and this month I feel like everything I have pretty much amounts to a full face, and I have honestly been like chomping at the bit to share these with you. So I'm gonna do it full face style. I'm sitting here with nothing on right now. Sometimes I feel like the latter part of the month sort of creeps up on me, and I'm like, okay, what were the favorites? Here I've been like keeping them in a little basket the entire month, which is what I usually do. I've been like keeping track and readjusting as time has gone on, and I'm just so excited about the things that um, I've really been using a lot of here lately. So the first thing is my go-to primer, and this is the e.l.f. Blurring Primer Serum, and I think some recent e.l.f. videos kind of brought this back into the picture for me. But this is actually a really nice primer. I always end up like misusing the dropper, and then I just end up swiping it on all over like that. But what I like about this is that I feel like it gives a little extra moisture to my skin. It is effective on pore blurring, but it also just gives an overall smoothness to the skin that feels really nice before makeup. It's really strange because it has that seemingly thin quality, but then you put it on and you're like, oh, okay, it kind of like hangs together and sort of smooths the skin out somehow. Alrighty, then I've had a couple of different foundations that both happen to be from L'Oreal that I've been wearing quite a bit. Um, I got into my Infallible Fresh Wear again, and this was kind of in a too light shade for a lot of the recent months. But I feel like now this rose ivory works for me. So I've been using that. I've been enjoying the thinness, the coverage level. It's been having pretty good staying power for me. So it seems like just kind of a nice little all around foundation. But then even more recently, I've been playing with this infallible um, fresh wear powder. I know you guys saw me using this like with a big brush and I was using it pretty much as my foundation in one of my new at the drugstore videos. And I was kind of like, well, you know, the coverage isn't amazing here. And I feel like I can get more coverage if I use that sponge. I'll like build it up a little faster, but ultimately they kind of both come to the same end. Whichever way I choose to do it, if I'm using a big buffer brush, I think I can still build it to its max, but its max just isn't like amazing in comparison to certain liquid uh, full coverage foundations. However, where I've really been loving this is kind of in combination with some more lightweight products. So like for example, this Age Perfect Radiant Serum Foundation. I've been using this and then like putting a little bit of this on top and I find that they're really good partners and I feel like I have good staying power um, in that combination. Cream Beige is the shade that I have and I'll link below to the video where I did a full um, review on this range but it's kind of like thin, lightweight. The coverage is kind of surprising once you see this blended in. I'm just going to use my little Artigo brush here and as you can see you know we're getting extra moisture here we are getting some coverage. I'm getting a hair caught in the brush. This shade is so on point. All right, so there we go. We're kind of glowy, radiant. Um, the skin to the touch doesn't feel over the top tacky, but it does feel like there's really some moisture there. And then concealer-wise, I'm just gonna pop on my newest one because I feel like I've bounced around a lot with concealers this month and I haven't really settled into like one for sure favorite. So this is my Wet n Wild Mega Last Incognito in light beige. So we'll just do a little of this. This feels like a pretty thin concealer. It does have some good coverage. I'm kind of struggling to see it going above and beyond like my e.l.f. camo concealer, but I'll just buff this in real quick. Feeling quite good about the coverage that we've got right now. Um, and then I'm gonna set like my under eye area T-zone. And the powder I have been using pretty much constantly is this one from Fenty, and it's my Lavender Pro Filter Loose Powder. If you watch one of my recent declutters, you might have seen kind of pushing toward the back, I have a Fenty Loose Powder in there. And that's the one that's called Butter, I believe is the name of it, and it's just a little bit of a beigey yellow tone. And I remembered getting that one and kind of liking the texture, but I felt like, oh my gosh, if there's a lavender one out there, um, I know that's gonna be like extra brightening. And I know Besame has had a lavender powder. I don't know that they're still in the powder making business anymore, but nonetheless, I really do like this lavender powder and I'd had it for a while. It was just kind of a matter of rediscovering it. So I tap a little bit out into my lid here and grab my e.l.f. small tapered brush. And then this is just a way, you know, if I am going to blot on another powder and I know I am with that infallible, I can still maintain like my evenness and brightness on the under eye area. 
and really the entire t-zone is kind of where I like to put this and then it's just sort of optional if I want to go on with some extra powder all over but I gotta say I don't think I'm a, the biggest fan of that mega last incognito maybe I need a corrector first because I feel like I can still see some <laughs> circles but just to show you like the tone difference there's the butter one see how it's more yellowy and then this one yeah the ultimate brighten packaging is really pretty on these kind of bulky but beautiful the bulky and the beautiful bronzer wise no particular one and only favorite so I'm just gonna pull in my diffused bronze light because it's been a little while and I love this one I have been using my Ulta Bake Sculpt and Glow quite a bit as well. I mean, those are just incredible products, so they could be all-time favorite status, probably. Has anybody checked if they got Tahitian Sun back on the website yet? It's like, did they sell out and then forget how they made that one? Are they gonna bring it back? Blush and Highlight Faves. Love these. These look so radiant and pretty together. Something about the tone of them both. My Found Blush in Pink Glow. Love, love, love it. If I'm not using some kind of palette or got some other sort of theme going with my makeup, I'm wanting to reach for this. And then that Buxom White Russian Highlight that has ever so slightly like a little pinky shift to it. Um, they're so pretty on the cheeks together, like a really luminous, pretty flush. Um, so this is that brand that's at Walmart, that 99% natural brand or whatever. Just putting it on with my e.l.f. blush brush here and look how pretty. Ooh. And I believe it was a recent Shop My Stash video that brought this one to light again. Um, there's a gorgeous one uh, that's a little bit like deeper in tone called I think Rose Glow. That's one that I broke. And then there's a peachy one as well. The peachy one doesn't show up quite as well on my cheeks, but this one and the rose one are stunning because they do have a little bit of a glow in there, as you can see. Oh, love, love that. And then the highlight. Um, as you saw, this is kind of the star of the White Russian video where I reviewed that whole collection that Buxom put out. Well, maybe not the sole star. I've got another thing that I love there too, but look. It's so brightening and pretty with just the slightest hint of kind of a pinkiness that comes through. And I feel like it just, is a match made in heaven with this blush. Cheeks, I swear, it's the most fun. Right now, I'm really in a cheek place, okay? Sometimes foundation's most fun. Sometimes concealer and powder are most fun. Sometimes eyes are most fun. Right now, I'm really in a cheek vibe. I mean, can you handle how pretty that highlight is? It's so smooth. I gotta get some on the Cupid's bow, too. It's special, guys, I gotta say. Then I'm gonna use a little aloe, sage, and orange blossom to set. Next up, brows, e.l.f. Brow Wow. This one has kind of come into the picture as a really like awesome product here. I kind of feel like it's doing sort of what my Glossier Boy Brow is. This thing is loaded with little fibers on the inside. Like every time I take the brush out, I'm always kind of amazed at how many little hairs are in there. But yeah, I feel like I can just go straight to the brow without doing anything else and get a really nicely evened out look. And you know, it's gonna cost you less than the Glossier, so that works. It does give me a feeling of hold and the thickness and you know, the pigment. Now sometimes, like I just did there, I'll feel like maybe I got a little bit of extra creaminess off the tip of the brush, in which case I just grab out a spoolie and kind of work it on through, you know, just the bare spoolie. But that doesn't happen often. Like, I don't feel like this is overly goopy. It's just kind of if you get the tippy tip right in there. I love the way it fills in. It's, it's so quick. Like, can you argue with the speed? Now that I work some off of that tip, it's really ready to go right over here. And another thing about this is it can kind of work in coats for you. If you felt like you went initially over a brow and like, well, I need a little extra, it, <sighs> you know you're in the zone when the gentle weather channel weather alert on your phone makes you wanna fly out of your seat. No, what was I saying? If at first application, it doesn't feel like enough, you can build this, okay? You can let it sit there for a second and then go back over and actually feel like you can effectively get the look of more. But usually one go around is enough for me. As you can see, I've got a decent amount of brow to start with, so that's probably why, you know, this is workable. If you have hardly anything there and then you're trying to rake through with this, you know, 
it may be a bit of a losing battle, but it could be a nice second step if you need to really precisely fill in with pencil in some other areas, you know? But it just kind of like fluffs them up a little bit. I don't know. I feel like I got great hold out of it. I'm trying to think of any other front runner products like this. You know, I love the Alme Brow Styler. Um, that one is less about the fiber. That one is a really incredible hold, but maybe not quite like as thickening up as this one is. I'm just really impressed. And the fact that it does it on its own and I'm like really happy with it. I wasn't like trying purposely to minimize. I'm just like happy using that product as is. Then we're gonna put on a little Milani eyeshadow primer. And yes, I use this darn thing every day. When am I gonna use it up? Oh, it's getting a little harder to push it out of the top, but I still got some. And thinking about eye palettes, really? I've been bouncing around, but I would say my Catrice ones, honestly, have probably been some of the most used lately. So I might just use one of those today just to give you another look at another one, you know? I know I haven't used the badass one, but I'm not sure it's like fitting my light pink, like light pink cheek vibe and all that and the lipstick that I wanna put on. Mm, might be a little overly warm, but this one, the self-made, let's do that. So a way I tend to like to start out with this palette is going to this pretty like kind of taupey lilac called Empire and just pick some of that up with whatever you like to do your crease with. For me, it's a Sigma E25 and you get this pretty just cool wash going right there. Like I said, for me right now, the top, top makeup enjoyment, I mean, I like every part of putting my face on every day, as they say, but the thing that I'm really, really into right now is I, I love those face steps, the, the bronzer, blush, highlight type steps. But these Catrice palettes, my friends, I'm just, I'm loving them so much also. And in case you missed the last video where I was talking about all these, the demo in that one is on the Insta Bay. And in a past Catrice video where I did a full face, I used the basic one there. Then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna use the shade called Work. And it's got some shimmer and a little bit of rusty rosiness. And we're just gonna work <laughs> that into the crease. Boom. There's some real approachable shimmer in some of these bottom shades there in the bottom row. They're just easy to use. Like, you know, if you packed them on, you'd get a pretty sheen out of them. Otherwise, if you sheer them out like this, you don't see the shimmer as much, but you can take advantage of their depth and get a pretty creasy color. Grabbing a fluffy brush, going into self-made. That's our matte cream. Highlight, highlight. And then I am ready for some deep, dark plum. We are gonna go down here to equal pay. It's our super nice plum here. And yes, every one of these palettes has a nice little mirror. Just a really nice, easy to hold, easy to use size, 12 color palette, $15. Can't go wrong. But this one's for my plum lovers, plum and berry. So I'm just patting that equal pay shade right here. This is the kind of darkness we want to really get on the outer lid into that outer crease. And then another favorite that I've really come into this month has been the um, E27. So it's like the baby sized, why am I holding up that one? It's the baby sized E25. Okay, so just a little bit downsized. And I really like the way this reaches the crease so well, like the deepest part of my crease. So if I want to like get a little bit more uh, precise placement or really, um, you know, because I have a smaller brush that'll do that, that little profusion guy. I do love the way that can shape an outer V, but mostly when I reach for this, I'm looking to just further blend um, a spot that's kind of like right in here, you know, something that's been applied and just needs a little help blending, moving around. It's not always an application brush, you know, it can be, but that's where I pull it in is when I need a little bit of just smoothing out in an area where I feel like the E25 might be too big. I'm gonna go back to the flat brush and I'm gonna use Boss up here, which is our really pretty um, kind of satin finish berry. And I think I'll just pop some of that like center of the lid right here. Very pretty. In comparison to the new Wet n Wild Berry palette, I mean, this seems a lot more like muted if you look at them side by side. I don't know, I feel like this one's got a lot more warmth, like some peachy shades, which I like that element of it. This may be a little more everyday. Then I think I'll take CEO right here, flat brush. And look at how beautifully those shimmers just 
go on and work in with everything. I love the, the tiny bit of like, I don't know, maybe just a hint of peachy goldenness that that shade has. Looks super pretty coming in with everything else. And then if you want even more lightness around your inner corner, this shade called Slay right up here. Gorgeous. Just brighten up that tear duct area. Then I'm going to grab a pencil brush and go down here to Roll Model. Kind of a, a super brownish plum. Just not quite as dark as the matte plum. I'm going to use that as a little smudgy lower liner kind of lower shadow. So as you can see, it's a gorgeous kind of like everyday plummy palette. It's nothing in here is super loud or super like, whoa, off the charts colorful. But you can look at the eye and you can tell like, oh, it's got that, it's veering in that direction. And I just, I really like that. Next up, I'm going to whiz through a couple of steps. Um, I'm just going to do some eyeliner. This is Wet n Wild Breakup Proof. I'm going to pop in um, a light liner in the lower inner rim, my ABH Duo. I was thinking about talking about my duds in this video as well, but this is probably going to be pretty long, and I think I have more duds. So I, I might just make that into its own video, actually. Just some stuff I haven't been loving lately. Because they need their time as well, don't they? Little adjustment I'm going to make because I want like a little more berry in this look. Taking my small brush, or the E27. And I'm just adding a little right out here. Bury it up. Just kind of starting it maybe just barely above my like crease line area. And then not really letting it go out any further than where my liner is. I'm going to chat for a moment about the Sky High uh, Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. I know this is like really popular right now. Everybody's talking about how they're having trouble finding it because it's just all the rage. I really wasn't nuts about this, as you may have remembered in an earlier video. When I was like first using it, I wasn't over the moon. Um, I'm following up here to say that after, I don't know, a period of weeks, I think it's gotten a little bit better. Like the formula is just building on itself a little bit better and it does wear well as in not smudging and flaking but does it give me the satisfaction of superhero i would have to say no you guys i am such a doofus i forgot to put this on <laughs> this stuff um because i do think it's a pretty combo over the foundation or the cc creamish type thing that i put on today i'm popping on lashes too just a second Got some kind of like full fluttery ones that I just found in the bathroom. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the style is, but they're kind of like a lengthened out wispy feeling. But yeah, I mean, I am pleased with the look of the skin. I don't really feel like I needed a ton of extra coverage, but what I would do with this is just use, if I were going over, like layering it on top of an existing like coverage product, be it light coverage or more coverage, I would take this same brush and I would stamp into it and just kind of roll it across the skin. And um, it would probably have just mattified me a little bit more, maybe added a little extra coverage to what I've got going on. But it does look nice over this one. I just, I don't know where my head was at. Doing a little bit of the Thrive on the lower lashes, just because it's been working for me lately, not smudging. My lip favorites, they're both from Buxom, actually. One of them is the White Russian Lipstick. I mean, I really have just been wanting to reach for this shade. It's more pinky than you would picture White Russian being, as I talked a lot about in the video on that collection. I was like, you know, I was expecting it to be more nude, not quite so light pink, but the shade has really grown on me a whole heck of a lot. I'm going to pop it on right now. You'll see kind of why I went the more berry direction on the eye today. 
But overall, it's a formula thing with these lipsticks that makes me love them so much. I mean, the color, like I've gotten into the color kind of, but I love the um, kind of cooling sensation, a really beautiful texture on the lips. It's like refreshing to put on. There's kind of a nice little thickness to the lipstick. It's not over the top shiny or greasy or anything, but I mean, it's just beautiful on. So I've really been enjoying that color actually and that formula period. Um, another shade that I like is called Pops star and that's from their nudes collection if you like a dusty rose something a little deeper that's so pretty but my other favorite is something that i got from a little kit of buxom products and it's the plump line lip liner in the shade called hush hush and it's just like this jumbo pencil and the shade is so perfect it's like milani's spice lip liner but in a jumbo stick and if you really want to quickly like fill in with that sort of neutral toasty shade um, it's just the perfect size and shape to do that really well and I just I love the color as is but it's a nice little base sort of for more nude shades or maybe you've got something really nude on and you want to just deepen it a little bit it's just a nice little all-purpose lip pencil but I like the thickness of it you know I hope that shade isn't just something limited edition I hope they actually make that I'll look into that for sure this feels like kind of a little Valentine's-y type look. Are you getting that vibe? Maybe just the light pink lip and the rosiness on the eyes. I hope you guys enjoyed the favorites this month. I will be working this in and using this in some more Get Ready With Me videos. I can't believe I didn't go ahead and layer that up today because that's really been sort of an experimental thing I've been doing lately. But it's what you would expect, you know, it's a powder foundation product, so it's gonna be a little coverage adder, a little coverage boost to anything that you feel is a little bit more on the light side but obviously you know there's really good coverage in that L'Oreal um, age perfect thing on its own so thank you guys again so much for your time I will have probably a non favorites video coming soon because that would have taken a lot of time to share all that here let me know what things you've been loving lately in the comments section and I will see you again soon bye